I still remember it like it was yesterday. The first time me and my friend Veronica saw Jeff the killer. He was coming out of a forest that had been burned down. Nothing but charred remains. He had been badly impaled by something. Later on, we learned that this was, in fact, from his battle with Slenderman. Veronica insisted on helping him. I protested, and I found a lot of her tendencies annoying. There are a lot of things I couldn't understand about her, like wanting to save an animal that had eaten a child's face off, or wanting to understand serial killers instead of locking them up away from the rest of us, where they couldn't do any more harm. Even still, I accepted these things about her as she accepted my tendencies that she did not like as well. Like my nature of being brutally honest no matter what the situation is, I believed deep in my heart that honesty really is the best thing. Hiding the truth will only make it all the more painful once the truth is revealed. She insisted on helping him. So, I ran up next to her. As she stared at him, mocking eyes with a serial killer. Before he could do any harm, I had pulled something out of my bag. It was a syringe. He had stepped closer. And closer, and closer still. By his fourth step, I had stabbed the syringe into him. Fuck! He screamed as it echoed throughout the once live forest. He fell unconscious. What was that you just gave him? It was a knockout. It was a knockout sedative, I said, stammering a bit. I just, if we're going to dress his wounds and help him, we need to make sure he can't hurt us. Right, Veronica said, nodding her head agreeingly. We both lifted him up. I spent most of the duration carrying him, however. Veronica is smaller than I am, so I didn't want her to hurt herself. We got him home, dressed his wounds, and gave him antibiotics for whatever infection may have set up. I had started to wonder about myself at this point. You know those crazy women who write letters to serial killers in jail and try to encourage them and send them money and love letters and flowers? I was worried we were becoming one of those people. Veronica looked at him as he lay there asleep. I feel so sorry for him. When you look at it, he's really a victim. Yes, but what about the other victims? The ones that he stabbed to death? She looked at me. I know, but... A sympathetic look filled her eyes. I understand, I said, deciding to end the conversation there. It wasn't but a few hours later when Jeff woke up. The fuck am I doing here, he said. I rolled my eyes. Can't you go five seconds without swearing, I said, walking over to him. Oh, it's you, he said, a psychotic smile crossing his face. He reached over. His knife was gone. Are you looking for something? I had to clean your knife. I just, I couldn't look at it. It was covered in blood and God only knows what else. I looked at him as he growled at me. Stop growling. I told you. I just cleaned it. I didn't get rid of it. Veronica, upon hearing us speaking, came in and was very relieved to see that Jeff was okay. You're okay, she said. I could tell some skepticism filled the serial killer's eyes. I'm quite certain he didn't know what our intentions were at this point. Despite this, and despite my concern, I still helped to take care of him, even on pawn days and taking care of him when Veronica could not be there. I would make him food, bring him things to eat, and I would even talk to him. I had pretty interesting conversations with him. The relationship expanded beyond this, however. When me and Veronica decided to move in together, Jeff was to come with us, and that he did. We had all developed an attachment to each other, but, however, Veronica's and Jeff's was much stronger than mine. I noticed the two of them walking off together quite often and spending lots of time together. And despite how much I tried to fight it, I had hopelessly fallen for him, and it took forever to hide the jealousy. I would always force a smile when I'd see the two of them. I would make myself happy to see them, even though secretly I'd begun to despise them. One night, as I sat in my room reading, I needed to use the washroom. I decided since I was already going there, I needed to take a shower too, so I started gathering up my pajamas. As I walked, I approached Veronica's door and heard sounds of passion coming from her room. My eyes widened as I dropped everything in my arms, realizing what the two of them 
we're doing, or rather just finished do, doing. My heart raced as tears started to flood my eyes, but I fought them back. I'd stood there for a while, a lot longer than I thought. Jeff had emerged from Veronica's room and looked at me. What? he sharply said. I didn't reply. What? he said again, his patience wearing thin. Nothing, I said, smiling warmly at him. I was just on my way to take a shower. Hm, he said. Nothing, huh? R yeah. Really, he replied. Of course I knew he didn't believe me. I pushed past him and went into the washroom, locking the door behind me and running a nice, long, hot shower. I had apparently been in there for some time before I heard Veronica gently tap on the door. Hey, Jasmine, I, I don't want to be rude, but, um... I really need to take a shower, and you've been in there for a while. I looked up. My hair was now dripping wet, so I looked towards the door. I'm sorry, I said. I'll come out right now. I finished up and came out of the bathroom. I had a, I was donning what I usually wore to bed, which was a pair of black shirt, shorts and a t-shirt. Good night, Veronica, I said. Good night. I laid there, not being able to sleep. However... A few moments later, I had started to drift off until I heard a slight tap at my door. At first, I had ignored it because I didn't really know if it was Jeff if I could face him. I, the tapping became more loud and erratic. So I opened the door. It was him. Hey, he said. Hi, I replied back. So... Did you need something? Yeah, I need to talk to you. What's your problem? He said. His voice sounded as though he was concerned and agitated at the same time. It's nothing. I returned to my bed sitting down, sitting down, sitting down, sideways. He'd come over and sat next to me. Bull fucking shit, he said. It's nothing, Jeff. Just go back to Veronica's room. I know that's where you want to be. What? He replied. His voice sounded as though it was slashing into me. That's what this is about, isn't it? You're jealous. I don't want to talk about this, I said, pulling the covers over my head. Well, you need to, he said. Sternly, as he pulled the covers off of me. Don't hide under the blanket like a child. <laughs> Trust me, I know that's what they do when they're scared. My blood ran cold for a minute because I realized what he was referring to. That's not funny, Jeff. Jeff put his arms around me. What are you doing? Jeff, I... Before I could protest any further, he touched his scarred mouth to mine and kissed me. I regret what I did with him afterwards. It was filled with passion, and I was very, very happy that he'd gotten close to me. But after I realized what I'd done to Veronica... I just, I shook. Me and him shortly began exchanging love letters after that before I decided that I had been selfish for long enough. I wrote him a letter. Each time I wrote him a letter, it had a word on the envelope. This one was entitled, Lust. Jeff, I said, I'm sorry about this, but we can't be together anymore. I do deeply love you, but I know she loves you more. In fact, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't have even helped you. You owe her your life and your existence to her. I have disrupted your relationship long enough. So after I, after I send you this letter, I will be packing up and leaving. I will not let myself ruin Veronica's happiness anymore. As I was packing, I spied a letter on my desk. I picked it up and immediately dropped it because it, it it was wet. There were two words written on this one in blood and it was fresh. My my heart began to race. You're selfish, the letter read. I could hear him in my ear saying go to sleep. Go to it echoed throughout the house. I had immediately begun to feel a sense of panic before I heard Veronica. <laughs> My eyes widened. I managed to peek into the room without being seen. 
My heart stopped once I realized what Jeff had done. He had slit Veronica's throat diagonally and then vertically and was watching as she choked to death on her own blood. I couldn't believe this. I managed to gather myself long enough. You don't sound so good. I'll go get you some water, I said, heading towards the kitchen. Instead, I grabbed a can of gasoline and headed directly towards the door. I put gasoline around the entire perimeter. A tear came out from my left eye. I'm so sorry. This is all my fault. I said before dropping the match. I watched the house go up in flames. I didn't hear a single scream, which led me to believe that Veronica had in fact been killed long before I set that fire. I didn't even hear Jeff. But of course he must be okay because he was used to being burned. Even if he was dying, he was still used to being burned. The next day before I left, I went back. Nothing but the charred remains of my house was there. I looked deep within a pile of ashes that was still slightly blazing. There I found Jeff's hoodie, Jeff's knife. It was over. After that, I decided that I didn't need to live in the U.S. anymore. I bought a ticket and hopped the first flight to Tokyo and applied for my citizenship there. I lived there for a while, attending a university there. For a while, everything was going fine. I had even begun to try to forgive myself for what I had done. I knew that if it hadn't been for me, she would still be alive. As I lay there one day, just thinking to myself, I remember that today was the Japanese festival of the Day of the Dead. A smile came to my face as I, be as I pulled out a box from my closet. It was full of Veronica's old things that I managed to salvage from the fire. I smiled. I would make a shrine for her, honoring her for the Day of the Dead. As I began, I was laughing, thinking about all the memories me and her used to have. Staying up late at night reading creepypastas. <laughs> she loved creepypastas, even wrote a few of her own that turned out pretty good. Despite criticism from several assholes online. The festival had started and I headed out, wearing my best kimono. I walked around the festival, enjoying all the different booths, all the different games, and even all the different food. I went by this river that had little lanterns racing down it. Every, they were set by people who were sending them out for the spirits. I watched as each one flowed past me happily. I felt the presence behind me. It was warm and radiating. I turned around. It was Veronica, donning a... Nakajuba, and similar to the one Hell Girl wore in the anime. I looked at her. Veronica? I said as tears came to my eyes. Y you're here. I am, she replied. Do you still hate me? I don't. In fact, I never did. I knew that if you thought that I was still alive, you would have never left me there to die. I wouldn't have. I'm so sorry. It's all my fault. I can never ask you to forgive me. <laughs> I've hated myself ever since that day. I shouldn't have shh, she said. It's okay. Don't apologize, she said, hugging me. For the first time in a very long time, I had felt so warm and safe. I chose today to appear to you. I thought it was appropriate, as it is the Day of the Dead. I smiled. You're beautiful, I said, seeing a radiating light come off of Veronica's skin. Oh my gosh, you're a light demon now, she smiled. I am. Will you stay with me, or did you just come this once? I will stay with you, she said, as long as you would like. I want you to stay forever, I said, looking up at her. Then I will, she said, smiling back at me. After he watched all the lanterns pass us by, I took Veronica into the festival and spoke to her. I thought people might think that it was the ramblings of a lunatic, but I suppose since it was the Day of the Dead, talking to, your, talking to someone who had passed was not exactly a crazy thing to do. 
I showed her all the special foods and things, and I showed her the new toys that they'd sold at the festival, and I even showed her some of the traditional Japanese dancers, and the kimonos that they had to offer there. It was just beautiful. The night ended, and it was time for me to return home. I had walked home, talking to her the entire way. I opened the door to my apartment. This is my apartment. It, it's small, but it has a bathroom in it, and that was what I needed. I couldn't do a communal bathroom, she said. I said, giggling. She smiled. It looks nice. It looks like a place you'd like to live, she said, sitting on the sitting on the floor. I put out some green tea for her. Surprisingly, she actually started to drink it. Apparently, spirits can eat things that you offer them. So, I made a few of her favorites that I knew she enjoyed when she was alive. Everything continued on after that. I had her every time I came home and every time I needed her. And I had my close friend again. Everything changed, however. One day when I was held hostage at school to help for a festival, I tried my best to get out of it, but <laughs> of course, Yuki was persistent. He wasn't letting me get out of it this time, so I ended up staying back. As I was walking home, I could hear someone walking in front of me, but that was normal. Usually around this time of night, the Japanese businessmen started to head home, and the school children and schoolgirls ran home to beat curfew so their parents wouldn't scold them. So I didn't think anything of it. Until I just got this eerie feeling that washed over me. I looked up, and there he was. Black dress pants, a white hoodie, the hood covering his face, and I could see his long black hair, and I could tell at this point who it was, the moment he smiled. Hello, Jasmine, he said. My eyes widened. No, I, how can you be here? You should know by now. It's not that easy to get rid of me, although I don't appreciate you trying to kill me, he said. Jess, I... I saw what you did to Veronica. I, I had to. You, you, you were going to kill us. You killed her. I couldn't bear to be without both of you, he said. So, I decided that we were all going to sleep together. First, since I was already in the room with Veronica, I put her to sleep. Next was going to be you. Then me. Then we could all spend eternity together. But of course you had to ruin everything by trying to kill me. But that's okay. I forgive you. Jeff, I said, my voice panicked and my heart racing. He began to advance closer to me before Veronica appeared in a burst of light. That's as far as you go, Jeff. Veronica, he said, smiling. I'm so happy. You're back. That means I can have you both again. Veronica's face filled with disgust. Don't you dare touch me, she said. A ball of energy began to form in her hands. I'm sorry, Veronica. I never meant to hurt you. I just wanted us to all be happy together. He advanced closer to her. Time seemed to freeze for a minute before she shot the before she shot a light beam out at him. Ah! He screamed as he hit the ground. On instinct, I raced towards him to see if he was okay. Jeff, I said, listen, I... I couldn't say anything else before I looked over at her. She nodded her head in agreement with me as we both helped Jeff up and took him back to my house. When he regained consciences, consciousness again, Jeff, listen, I know you want to stay with us, but if you're going to do that, you need to understand some things. You can't just mindlessly slaughter people anymore. And you can't hurt whoever you want. I know you can't help it. No one blames you, but I don't need to kill anyone, he said smile. He said as his smile struck across his face. I have you two again. Veronica stood there, her eyes locked on him the entire time. Veronica, he said, standing up, staggering over to her. I've missed you so much. Really, Veronica said, her eyes filling with hate. You stabbed me to death. How can you even say that to me? I loved you, trust me. I just wanted us all to be together. I didn't think we should all be separated. Jasmine was going to leave us. 
Veronica looked over at me, a surprised look on her face. I had decided that I'd disrupted your relationship enough, so it was time for me to go and let you two be happy together. I had to let go. I had to. I would have hated myself if I wrecked any chance of you actually being in love. Jeff hugged Veronica tightly. I love you, he said. I'll never leave you. You know that. You know that. I know you know that somewhere in your mind. Veronica froze a moment before returning Jeff's hug. If you want, I said, you, you can stay with me. And Veronica, too. But you must heed what I said earlier. I know, he said, smiling at me warmly, which was a little bit odd for his character. The days went on normally after that. Periodically, Veronica would leave, and I finally asked her where she was running off to all those times. As a light demon, she said, I have a, I have a duty to the children, the fallen children of Japan. It is hard for them to accept their death, so I stay with them and play with them and lead them into the afterlife. I play with them for as long as it takes for them to accept their fate. And then, finally, finally, die. Of course, I said, smiling warmly at her. I it's just like you to do something like that. <laughs> Things went on normally. Everything seemed to be going fine. I hadn't seen any tendencies in Jeff or anything like that. I kept up looking at his wounds that he'd, knew he'd gotten fresh ones from his newest victims. Although he hadn't, from what I understood, he hadn't killed anyone around where I was. Everything seemed to be going fine. I had gotten the two people I actually cared about back in my life until one night. Jeff came home, drunk, staggering and out of control. Veronica immediately appeared next to me, as usual, in a burst of white light. What's going on? I shook. No. He didn't. What? Veronica said, facing him. <laughs> he was covered in fresh blood. Jeff. What? He said, stammering. <laughs> what the little bitch had it coming? I couldn't take it anymore, he said. He had attempted to come closer to me, but Veronica intervened. She shot another light out through her hands. This one was looked like a bunch of cherry blossoms, you know, when they get swayed by the wind. Flying at him, knocked him out. I removed his clothes and started and started washing them. Who do you think it was, Veronica said. Oh, God, please don't let it be anyone we knew. I, I said, my whole body shook. My voice was filled with fear. I couldn't believe this. But it became apparent to me and Veronica that he could not be changed, and he was too dangerous to be allowed to, to exist. The next day, Veronica found out who it was. Kyoko, she said. What? Kyoko. We both knew her. A twelve-year-old girl that, we, that I often looked after. Of course, Veronica was around too, but Kyoko couldn't see her. Kyoko, I said. My stomach became sick. Jeff stood there smiling, as though he was happy with the sandy work. Veronica walked towards him. I heard her wooden sandals hitting the hitting hitting our hardwood floor, which would seem like with great force. Smack. Time seemed to stop for a moment before I realized what she had done. She just slapped Jeff clear across the face. She was just twelve. She was too young for what you did to her. You're so... Veronica t took a step back. I don't have time to deal with you right now. I have to go and guide that poor child to the spirit world. She vanished afterwards. I'm gonna go run some errands, I said. Surprisingly, Jeff didn't reply. I gathered up my things and went out. I went to the Asian market. Bought some, which in Japan, of course, it's just a regular market, but I'm still used to calling it that. Bought some food, dropped it off at home, and then I stood by the pond. It had begun to rain. 
A storm was hitting Japan, but I didn't care. If I caught pneumonia and died, it would be better than what was fated to happen to me. I felt something over my head, and I looked up. It was a red umbrella. I looked to see who was holding it. It was Jeff. Hey, he said. It, it, it's raining out. So I brought you an umbrella. I know you and Veronica are mad at me right now. Not as if I actually wanted to hurt you. For a moment, all I could hear was the rain hitting the umbrella Jeff had brought me. It, it's raining out. So, so I brought you an umbrella. You'll never leave me. Right? Tears filled my eyes. I turned towards him. No. I'll never leave you. And I'll never leave you either, he said, ra gently wrapping his arms around me. I shuddered a bit. The image of what I'd seen the night before had still not left my head. Jeff insisted on a walk through the forest after this. He'd helped me close to him the entire time, almost in trying to not lose what little grip he had on me left. He finally appeared back at home. As I opened the door, Veronica stood there. Me and her made eye contact. We knew it was time. We have drawn this out long enough. Jeff, Veronica said. We love you dearly, but you are too dangerous to allow to exist. A psychotic laughter escaped Jeff's, Jeff's mouth. My house. That's all I could hear now. Just his laughter thundering through my house. He lunged at me and began stabbing me and stabbing me and stabbing me. Honestly, I didn't even feel it. For a long time, I'd felt that I should have been the one dead in the first place. Not Veronica. So him stabbing me, I just looked at it as though it was just my turn to feel pain. Before he can continue, Veronica raised her hand, shooting out of it a bunch of what looked to be light whips, similar to the ones Shishomaru used. However, these wrapped around Jeff. If you all are familiar with the anime Shakugan no Shama, with the specialist of everything's ribbons, Light ribbons. That's what these were. They wrapped around him and tossed him to the back wall. I was still sit lying there, gurgling. Half numb, half dying, but I was okay with that. Veronica went up to Jeff. It's your turn to go to sleep, she said, before shooting another light out of her hand. This one looked like spider lilies. Red, glowing spider lilies. My whole house radiated with light. There was nothing to be seen but the light. This would have blinded most people. I heard Jeff scream, and then he was gone. Veronica then made her way over to me and began healing me. Don't, I said. I don't deserve your help. This is all my fault. Everything would have been fine if I just... Not another word, Veronica said. I don't care what you say. I'm not going to let you bleed to death. I felt a warm yellow light radiate over me before I felt myself beginning to heal. Now that the wrong has been righted, she said, we can restart. I didn't know what she meant by that, but afterwards I fell asleep. I woke up the next morning hearing a scratching sound. I opened my door, two doors down from me, it was Moichi and Blackie, Veronica's cats from when she was still alive. I raced over to the door and opened it. There Veronica was, sound asleep. I shook her, waking her up. Veronica, I, I had a really strange dream that you and I both know, she said as her eyes shot open. It was no dream. But don't worry, everything is restarted now. So it's like that stuff didn't even happen. We can start, restart our lives. I smiled. I should be getting to school then. Well, there's a few changes, she said. For instance, look at your ID. I looked at it. Jasmine Octavia Green. 
16 years old, Tokyo resident. What? Time reset itself. So me and you have an opportunity to, I suppose, right the wrongs in our lives. As the both of us didn't have a good experience in school, we can have that now. And I never died. I looked at her. I wondered about her family, but I hesitated to ask. My father knows I'm here, so instead of remembering having to bury his daughter's charred remains, he remembers me moving and supporting it. Things continued on normally after that. Me and her both continued going to school. Everything was- life was good, until one day, the class had a trip to Mount Fuji. We were on the bus, and everything was relatively normal. Or should I say the train? <laughs> I had I had been sitting there for quite some time, just thinking about how nice life had been. But I was tired, but for whatever reason, didn't want to fall asleep. I suppose I didn't want to miss the scenery. A boy next to me that I had never seen before. Just go to sleep. He said, smiling. My eyes shot open immediately as I looked up at him. Well, what did you just say? Well, you just look so tired. Why don't you just go to sleep? I looked at him. He had long black hair and was wearing our standard school uniform, which was a white button-up shirt and black pants and nice black shoes. Upon looking at him, I saw he didn't have Jeff's telltale eyes or his telltale Joker knockoff smile, so I relaxed. I'm sorry, I said. Someone else I used to know said that, used to say that to me all the time. I smiled warmly at him, trying to reassure him that I wasn't upset or even crazy. Really, he said. I said, uh huh. It was someone I knew a long time ago, but he's gone now. Really, he said once again. For some reason, I began to tense up. I noticed upon glancing over Veronica, Blair had shot over to, to me and the boy I was sitting next to. He wrapped his arms around me. I told you I'd never leave you, didn't I? <gasps> Calm down. Don't be afraid. I told you I'd never leave you, and I never will. Now, just go to sleep.